So Vinay, why don't you tell us what is OMP? Yeah, let's go there. So, so what we have here are two edge devices at two different sites. Let's say we have two controllers or vSmarts. And we have your LAN segment residing over here behind VH1 with a user one here. Again, VPN one, your LAN segment in another office where there is user two. What you want to do is create a virtual private network between user one and user two. So how does this happen? So let's say user one has an IP address X and user two has an IP address Y. What we have, what we had discussed in the previous lecture is we have a tunnel, uh, that a control plane set up between the edge and the vSmart using a standards-based protocol. This could be either DTLS or TLS. So before we go further, hmm. can you just explain the difference between DTLS and TLS? So it, to keep it very brief, one's using UDP, TLS is using TCP. So uh, it, the only difference in actual control plane bring up between DTLS and TLS is how we get past the NAT. And that, that's a whole separate lecture on how we can get past the NAT for each of these protocols and how you want so to... in principle, the, the main distinguishing factor between them is whether it's TCP, uh, TCP or, UDP. or UDP. So we're using these standard protocols. So what so, happens... So, with, so just to clarify for the users, DTLS is the protocol leveraging UDP as the mechanism for carrying, and TLS is a TCP-based protocol. Yeah. So now that we have this secure channel that or tunnel set up between the edge and the controller, what we can do is run a proprietary protocol within this tunnel. So it's like saying I have this link up. I really don't care what wave goes through this link, okay? Because this need not be standard. What needs to be standard is actually what's running between these, not what's running inside this tunnel. So what we have over here is OMP or overlay management protocol. So what we've described here is you have a secure connection between the edge and the controller based on TLS yes. or SSL-based tunnel, inside which we're running the routing protocol OMP. OMP. So OMP is pretty analogous to BGP but it gives us a lot of flexibility because it's not standard. We can extend this at will. We can add functionality. We can actually add labels at will to actually get new features in to the edge boxes without actually having to upgrade the entire network. You could leverage OMP to get your vSmarts to become smarter really fast. So, so coming back to the question that you'd raised about route targets, because this isn't classical BGP or MPBGP, we don't necessarily have route targets in the same fashion, but OMP is providing us the capabilities that what we would have expected traditionally. Traditionally. You're said, so in, in between the DTLS connection, we run OMP. Yes, yes. Got it. So, so now what happens is this IP address X of user X is propagated from the edge towards the controller using OMP and then propagated back to the far end edge using the OMP session between the controller and the edge. Another uh, compo uh, interesting question is when I advertise uh, my T-Log to vSmart, mm -hmm. is that the first workflow and then advertise my server side VPNs? Is that the sequence of advertisements? So. Yes and no. So what we are, the T-Lock is also another route for OMP. 
So each of the VPNs. So, is so a, I suppose what you're describing is all the different things that we've looked at, the VPN, the T lock, the protocol that's carrying that information for us in the system for ST WAN is OMP. OMP. So everyone subscribes to OMP. So any VRF or VPN is a subscriber of OMP. So it really doesn't matter. So VPN one, treatment about a uh, view of OMP is the same as VPN zero. For VPN zero, the only routes that it has, or the major routes it has, consists of the T locks themselves. So VPN zero is telling OMP, hey, I have these routes, which are the T locks. Please propagate them down to the far end. VPN one is subscribed to OMP as well. So it's letting OMP know, hey, I have this route X, please propagate it to the far end. What the far end does with those routes is, be, is just like how a VRF would be treated. You would have a separate, separate routing table for each VRF. So you would have a routing table for VPN zero, which would consist of all the T locks in your network, and hence also consist of information to establish these tunnels between the endpoints and then it would also have a routing table for each of the VPNs or VRFs that are on the service side. So it will have a routing table for VPN one at each end as well. So OMP is providing us the routing functionality. Yes. Now that we've looked at the terminologies for VPN, for T-lock, for color, for OMP, uh, can you highlight some of the additional terms that we use within the SD-WAN solution? So the other terms, what we need to uh, discuss from the chart the tree I had drawn previously is we had we reached the T-lock. The node is the edge itself. We treat each uh, site to be uh, of significance in terms of managing. A site could consist of different nodes. And if a site consists of multiple nodes, you really don't want to establish connectivity between those two nodes themselves. So you could have a site that's front-ending the same user. So you don't need a loop right here where VH1 is talking to VH2 while front-ending the same user. So in that case, we have something called a site ID. That's a property of every edge. So Edges that have the same site ID do not share T-lock information with each other, and hence do not form a IPsec tunnel between each other. Uh, and it makes logical sense for us because hey, if you have to talk to your to someone within your network, you have direct reachability. You really shouldn't be terminating on an edge device anyways. It's for far-end connectivity where you want to actually end on the SD-WAN device. So a site ID for us is just allowing us to simplify the fact that there could be, and usually are, multiple devices in the same site. In the same site. So for redundancy, a data center could have six devices sitting in the same site. You don't want the data center devices talking to each other. It's basically for the spoke sites to all terminate on the data center itself. In those cases, you're using site ID as a unique identifier uh, for a particular site that's hosting more than one edge device. So. So one question on uh, yeah. multiple branch offices yes. can be connected through SD WAN, yes. but if they want segmentation, can site ADV can be used to segment them between a branch office which is sales and maybe another branch which is back office? So in that case, you'd leverage the VPN itself, the VRF itself. If a VRF doesn't exist on a box, the routes for that VRF are not advertised to it by OMP. So if VH1, has a VPN or VRF1 on it, and VH2 has only VPN2 configured on it. Okay. VH2 is not going to even see VH1 in the network in terms of VPN1. So our, our VPNs are our segments, segments our, okay. our layer three boundaries. Great. So that's how we segment our network in terms of VPNs. Uh, we are, so. Since our controllers, the vSmarts, are in a full mesh, constant connected state, they are in an active-active mode, 
they have a view of all of these segments, all of these routes, which helps us actually drive the view of your network through the vSmart itself. You can now further segment or leak routes between VRFs using the controller, which has a view of the entire network. So here, the, each of these vSmarts has a view of all the VPNs that exist in your network, irrespective of what a particular VEdge has or doesn't have. So we are very clear on the VPNs represent our network segments, OMP represents our network protocol, and the vSmarts are our controllers. Vinay, can you elaborate on some of the special nuances with our VPNs now that we have this notion of the WAN and the LAN? Sure, so that's a good question. So what we do in terms of our VPN segmentation itself is much like our architecture. You have your WAN segment, we reserve VPN zero for it. You have your LAN segment, this could be anything from VPN one to VPN six five five three five, with the exception of another segment, just like the architecture, the management segment. So you would want to have management con uh, connectivity and out of band connectivity for your device itself, whether it be the controller, the edge, or the NMS, and this has a reserved VPN called VPN 512. So, so, we, so this management VPN, is this routed in our network or is this purely for isolated management purposes? It is uh, completely isolated. This is the one VPN that is not subscribing to OMP. So you are not going to see the VPN 512 routes leaking across your network. It's supposed to be have context for manageability of a particular device at a particular site. So, so it's similar to just an out-of-band, yes. uh, local-only management, management VPN. Management VPN, yes. So this pretty much covers all the VPN segments that we have. We've discussed about OMP. We've discussed about the controllers, what a site means, what a T-lock means, what a node is in the network. So do you guys have any further questions? I have a question, Vinay. Yeah. Um, with regard to the terminology for our VPNs, are there any other terms that we use to refer to our VPNs? Oh, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. I almost missed that. So anything residing on your WAN segment, we term as transport. And anything that resides on your LAN segment, we term as service. Another way to distinguish it is anything in VPN zero or our proprietary VPN, we can call as a transport VPN. Anything that resides on a customer's VPN is a service VPN. Uh, on the same lines, you would see interfaces on the edge devices being called service or transport based on where they reside and what properties they have. So you could have, the moment an interface connects into a circuit, it essentially becomes a transport VPN, for, a transport circuit for us, a transport interface for us. So you'd hear the transport side and the service side pretty often. And, and would the transport interfaces be where the T-locks reside? Yes, hence the term transport location. So yeah, the T-locks all reside in VPN zero, your transport VPN, your VAN side. And we call it transport is because it is the interface, it is the network through which you overhaul your uh, data all the way across the internet onto the other end edge device. So it is our transport uh, location, our transport circuit, our transport interface. So yes, you'd hear the word transport and service pretty often uh, in our day-to-day -day speak for SD-WAN. So I have one quick question. Yeah. Earlier you mentioned one VH device can have multiple circuits. Yes. Is it possible to have multiple service providers connecting to the same VH device through different circuit can have the same color and same properties? No, so they can, ha they can have, they have to have different colors because if you don't have different colors, okay. then it uh, can't be uh, located distinctly at the far end. 
okay. but they can have two colors having similar properties. So if I have an AT&T public internet circuit and a Verizon public internet circuit, I'd give them both public colors. And public colors inherently have the same property that, hey, I can connect to any other circuit using my NAT translation. So you can have as many providers connecting into the edge without any problem. You can't have the same color, but you can have the same type of color. So we can be pri provider agnostic, but we need to have unique tagging to identify each provider coming in. So we leverage uh, for that for a lot of performance ma matrix. Uh, so metrics that we want to measure in the system uh, in, uh, for our performance routing, so on and so forth, to actually distinguish which circuit is what instead of clubbing them as one single unit. So you can actually get uh, better uh, application performance. Uh, tracking and logging tracking and, and, log okay. and all in such uh, capabilities. Any other questions you guys have? No, we are good. That was great, thank you. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks, Vinay. In this session, we explored the terminology that is used within the SD-WAN solution. It is fundamental to understand these terms as they are used within this solution. Thank you for watching this video.